Hey everybody, this is Eric Halterman of rotowire.com here with your first set of fantasy baseball waiver wire pickups of the second half. We've got some hitters and some pitchers today, each of whom is available in at least about two thirds of ESPN leagues as of recording. We'll start with Red Sox rookie outfielder, Jaron Duran. Duran was a good prospect in the past, but he wasn't close to an elite one, but a swing change that he underwent at the Red Sox alternate site last season appears to have had a big effect on his prospect pedigree. Uh, basically, he's started trying to hit home runs and it seems to be working. He's pulling the ball at a career high rate and hitting the ball in the air at a career high rate. He had just eight total homers in 199 professional games prior to this season, but he already has 15 in 46 games this year. And he's done that all without striking out more. A 23.7% strikeout rate is a completely fine number. He also has speed that fantasy owners crave. 12 steals this season is already a pretty good total, but he had 46 back in 2019, his previous full season. He should see plenty of playing time in center field uh, where he's not considered a great defender despite that speed, but Enrique Hernandez is hardly an immovable object out there and can easily shift to a utility role. Uh, I wanna throw a quick mention while we're talking about rookie outfielders that Mariners outfielder Jared Kelenic is also set to come back. He had a pretty disastrous 23 game debut in which he hit 096, uh, but he's far better than that. There is that downside with all rookies, um, but again, he, he is one of those potentially inner circle prospects uh, who should hit for power, speed and average eventually. Uh, he may well do that in the second half. And if he was dropped in your league after being stashed early, uh, definitely take a look. Next, we'll move to the mound and talk about Rockies righty, John Gray. Gray is one of the most obvious trait candidates out there. Uh, his contract expires after the season and just about every contender could use more pitching at all times. Uh, the nice thing about Gray is that everywhere he would move basically increases his chances of getting wins, uh, considering how much the Rockies are struggling. And everywhere he would move would be a massive boost to his home park factors, even if you move to say Philadelphia or Cincinnati, which have two of the more hitter friendly parks in the league that's they're still nowhere near Coors Field in Denver. To give some idea of how he'd look elsewhere, uh, his 377 ERA is nothing special, but it's good for a park adjusted ERA minus of 81. He's gotten it done this year with a strikeout and walk rate that are both slightly on the wrong side of league average, but he's combined that with a ground ball rate just over 50%. So he's not gonna be an ace for you by any means, but he's gonna be a lot more exciting as soon as he leaves cores. And again, he's one of the more obvious trade candidates out there. If he doesn't leave cores, I think that would be a pretty big mistake by the Rockies. For a much less proven pitcher, uh, consider Mets righty Tyler McGill. McGill was not much of a prospect, but he earned his chance after posting a 3.35 ERA and a 36% strikeout rate in eight minor league starts this season. And he's carried that success into the majors. Uh, in his first four starts, he has an ERA of 350. He's walking too many guys at 11.7%, but he's kept that elite strikeout rate at 33.8% and combined it with a very good ground ball rate. And if you do those two things, uh, it's hard not to have success at the big league level. And indeed, he's had that success so far. There are some concerns with him. Uh, he's not pitching deep into games, averaging just four and a half innings per start, which hurts his chances of getting wins. And he could eventually lose his spot when Carlos Carrasco returns from his hamstring injury. But again, that elite strikeout upside makes him very interesting in the short term. And he keep, if he keeps pitching somewhere near this level, uh, there's certainly a chance he sticks in the rotation and gradually gets stretched out more and more. If you're looking for relief help, consider Philly's probable closer, Ranger Suarez. Uh, it's not certain that he's completely taken the role, but two of his last three appearances have been saves. Uh, with Hector Neris pitching his way out of the job and Jose Alvarado and Archie Bradley both not really stepping up, seems like he has an opportunity to make the ninth inning his own and maybe even the eighth and nine at times. Uh, his last save lasted seven outs. Uh, it, it's no surprise that he has the possibility to pitch that long because he was more of a long reliever in the past wasn't a particularly interesting one. 466 ERA in 67 and two thirds innings prior to this year. Just four innings last year. He missed most of the year with COVID-19 and was sent right back down after 
a few disastrous outings. This year he has an 077 ERA, which clearly isn't sustainable, but his FIP and XFIP are both in the low threes, which is perfectly fine for a ninth inning roll. He doesn't have the elite strikeout rate you'd want in a closer. 26.3% is above average though, a lot better than the 18% he had heading into the year. But what he does have is an elite ground ball rate, uh, just over 65%. That's the sixth highest ground ball rate among pitchers who have thrown at least 30 innings this year. And out of pitchers in the top 15 in that group, that 26.3% strikeout rate is good for second best. So it's a package that should work. He wouldn't necessarily close for most contenders, but in a bullpen as shaky as the Phillies, he should have a real chance uh, to make that job his own.